Well, hello and welcome, everybody. I've got a problem here that I absolutely love. I love when these things have super cool answers, and this one has one. So let's hang out, do a little math together, learn something, and have a good time. Here we go. The details are we have this big square ABCD, and we have a smaller square, the purple one over there. We're going to call that DFGH. We have a quarter circle whose radius is CB, and we have a semicircle, which has a diameter of CH. And our job is to find the exact value of the ratio of the golden rectangle divided by the purple square. So if you'd like to try that on your own, go ahead and pause the video. Give it a shot now. Come back when you're done. If you have a different solution, a different method than I did, please let me know. I love to hear about different approaches, and man, I learn a lot that way too. So if you want to try it on your own, go ahead and do so now because I'm going to share with you my idea. All right, here we go. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and write an expression for the area of the purple square and the golden triangle, That's or golden rectangle. That's pretty easy. But then the tricky part is, and it's not entirely obvious ahead of time, is I'm going to explore the semicircle, the full circle, and the quarter circle, and see if I can come up with some expressions that I could maybe set up a system of equations, solve and substitute, and end up coming up with some numeric values for the square and the rectangle. All right. So if you tried it already, you got stuck, go ahead and pause the video now. Try it again. Maybe this is enough of a clue to get you over the hump and let you solve it the rest of the way on your own. Here we go. I'm going to try it myself. Ready? All right. So a square's area is the side length squared. So let's say the side length is x. So x squared. And the rectangle would be x times the other side, which we're going to call y. So xy. All right, so now let's talk about our circles right here. We've got some tangent points. So let's go ahead and highlight those. Tangent points are important because they're perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. And let's go ahead and draw a radius from here to this tangent point right there. And let's show that that does go through the center right there like that because we've got another radius right here. So this is capital R. That's the radius of the quarter of the quarter circle. And lowercase r is the radius of both the small circle and the semicircle. They have the same exact radius. You can see that here and at the bottom, exactly the same. All right. So now let's go ahead and see if we can break this apart and draw a little triangle down right here. So we're going to take this uh, part right here from the center of the circle to here. We're going to call that capital R minus lowercase r. And we're going to go ahead and drop down uh, from this center to the base of the bottom side of the square. We're going to drop a perpendicular line there. That's r and r. That makes 2r. It's a right triangle. The other side is r, and the hypotenuse is capital R minus lowercase r. So highlight it in red. Let's clean, clean up our screen so we can see exactly what we're talking about right here. Because we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem as you see on the screen here, we can square and simplify, and this is what we end up with. Capital R squared minus 2 capital R lowercase r minus 4 lowercase r squared equals 0. That's a mouthful. I'm not going to read all of those things to you every single time. That seems kind of silly. You can read on your own, right? Anyway, um, that's a quadratic equation. It's not factorable. It's in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1, b is negative 2r, and c is negative 4r squared. Do you see it? So we can use the, Pytha or the Pythagorean theorem. We can use the quadratic formula. All right, so let's go ahead and clean up some space right here. The quadratic formula, let's plug it in. So we've got 2r. Right, the opposite of that, we're going to square the b and get 4r squared, and then minus 4 times negative 4 is 16, and then of course the r squared. Right, combining like terms, we're going to get 20, and we can simplify that to make uh, 2r root 5 for the second half right here. Now, we got to be a little bit careful right here. r is a distance, so we got to make sure r is a positive number. And 2r root 5 is bigger than 2r because root 5 is a number more than 1. In fact, it's even a little bit more than 2, of course. And if I multiply that by 2r, it gets even larger. So if this was being subtracted, we'd have a, have a negative number. So we're only going to worry about the positive one, right? So we're going to go ahead and re reduce everything by 2 and get rid of our negative sign. So we know that the radius of the quarter circle is the radius of the small circle times 1 plus root 5. Right, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like in context right here and tuck this little value away. We need that for future reference. All right, so now 
we've got an expression for the radius of the quarter circle, which would also be the sides of the square. So let's talk about this bottom side of the square right there. We know that this part from here to here is x, and we know from here to here is the diameter, which is 2 lowercase r. So x plus 2 uh, lowercase r is equal to capital R. And since capital R is equal to lowercase r plus 1 root 5, let's go ahead and solve for x, and then substitute our value for r, and then we can figure out what x equals. So substituting, let's go ahead and distribute, combine like terms, and what we end up with is r root 5 minus r is equal to x. So now that we know what x is, we can figure out the area, right? So let's figure out the area of that purple square right there, right? We're going to go ahead and square it. And squaring, just be careful. You can't distribute the two. You have to multiply. Distributing, like, you know, I guess the, the acronym is FOIL, of course. So when we do that, we just have to be careful, multiply everything nice and carefully, make sure you don't make any sign errors. And when you're done, we can find that the area is 6R squared minus 2R squared root 5. So there's the area of our purple square. All right, so now let's see if we can tackle this golden rectangle up here. We already know what x is. What about y? Well, because this is the radius from left to right, and it's also the radius from up to up bottom to top because it's a square so those are equal and this right here is this, the sides of the square of the purple square we know that y has to be equal to 2r all right so y is equal to 2r so then mm, x times y that's the area of this golden rectangle so 2r times r root 5 minus r let's go ahead and distribute and just be careful there we go so 2 r squared root 5 minus 2r squared. That's the area of the golden rectangle. So now, our job is to find the exact value of the golden rectangle divided by the purple square. So let's go ahead and set up our fraction like this right here, shall we? All right, so now we can factor this. If you look at the numerator, we have two terms, right? They're separated by a subtraction sign, so we can factor out 2r squared. And the same thing in the denominator. We have two terms. So they're subtracted by this minus sign, so let's factor out a 2r squared. And those 2r squareds are, of course, going to reduce, and that's pretty cool because... Well, now we have a numeric expression. It's irrational, which is what is fine because we're going to do the exact value anyway. So let's go ahead and rationalize the denominator, right? Multiplying by the conjugate. And up here we have to be very careful once again. 3 root 5 plus 5 minus 3 minus root 5 divided by the bottom is pretty. The denominator is pretty easy. 9 minus 5, that's of course 4. So cleaning this up, this is what we've got. We can factor out a 2. Let's go ahead and do that. We can reduce by 2. And look at that. Phi phi fo fum. We have phi. That is super, super cool. I love how that comes out of this right here. Now, in case you're not familiar or you forgot, I want to show you. I want to show you that they, these two right here are, in fact, they do, in fact, have this ratio. So here's the golden spiral. Let's go ahead and take that uh, golden rectangle and let's go ahead and move it over here and rotate it. There we go. And then our purple square fits right on top. They have a ratio of phi. That is super, super cool. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this problem. I absolutely loved it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, share, all that kind of cool stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.